Hi, I'm Liz Barry. I teach English at the University of Warwick. Uh, I teach uh, modern literature and theatre. I work in medical humanities, so I think about the role of the arts in understanding health conditions, perhaps even improving treatment. Uh, and I think a lot about ageing. Um, so how it feels to age. Um, we hear a lot about ageing these days as an, as an issue, as a social problem, um, but not very much about how it feels to age, uh, how our relationship with our bodies changes, how uh, we perceive time differently as we get closer to the end of life. Um, and I'm thinking about how literature um, and the arts and philosophy might help us um, understand a bit more about that. Um, and I have worked for many years on the brilliant, arresting, um, really quite, still quite baffling uh, Irish-French writer Samuel Beckett. I think Beckett is really the man of the hour as far as writing goes. He um, he wrote the most famous portrait of waiting in all of literature, arguably, the 1951 play Waiting for Godot. Uh, he called his writing the siege in the room. Seclusion, isolation are uh, his stock in trade. You know, he really is the writer of lockdown. Um, and he writes a lot about old age. Um, and I've been thinking about um, ageing quite a lot, as so a lot of people have over the last few weeks and months. Covid has intensified generational tensions that, that surfaced uh, under austerity in the UK and with this ever deepening crisis of social care. Uh, but now people who whom we come to think of as relatively young, uh, at least in affluent society, are facing potentially the rationing of treatment, of, of medical equipment, uh, are being isolated, are being sort of condemned to merely exist, even to die, locked away in care homes um, or, or their own homes, um, just on the basis, in, in lots of cases, of their age. Um, Beckett doesn't always present an edifying picture of old age, I think it's fair to say, but he, he I think his writing removes the distinction, uh, the distinctions that partition off old people from the rest of society, from those who are notionally more productive. Um, like, as, as Virginia Woolf writes about the ill, Beckett writes about older people um, not as, as the other, as, as objects, but in the subject position, as, as those we're listening to. Wolf writes in her essay on being ill um, that when we're ill, um, we cease to be soldiers in the army of the upright. We become deserters. They march into battle. We float with the sticks on the stream. And I think that there's a there's a more universal kind of understanding, perhaps, of that feeling of circumstances which which mean a loss of agency um, for for us all uh, at the moment. And Beckett explores older age um, as as a kind of difference, um, but a difference that time makes that we we all live into if we're lucky, in a sense, um, he, he explores that, the kind of paradox about ageing, whereby um, in most societies it's something quite other, quite alien, um, it quite, quite fearful, but also, of course, inescapable, um, again, if we're lucky, universal. In his... Um, story, the short story, The Expelled, written in the 1940s when he was still quite young, um, he, he gives us a, a kind of sense of this. So the, the aged narrator is, um, who walks with a, with a very unsteady gait, is ejected from the pavement by a policeman. Um, the narrator says, he pointed out to me that the sidewalk 
was for everyone, as if it was quite clear that I could not be assimilated to that category. So how is it when we no longer feel feel part of that everyone, um, you know, what's being done um, to us in the name of everyone? These are questions very much for the moment. Um, age scholar Margaret Gillette talks about uh, how in literature uh, every character gets older, even if it's just a, a day or a few hours older. Um, you can perhaps all relate to that. Um, but we also feel, I think, in limbo at the moment, you know, as if time has some, somehow stalled. Time has stopped, as, as Vladimir in Waiting for Godot says. Um, and Beckett's Molloy, uh, in the novel of, of that name, um, talks about his life. He's housebound, um, an, an older character, uh, and he says of his life um, at, uh, as it is at, uh, towards the end, um, he says, at the same time it is over and it goes on, and is there any tense for that? I think in lockdown it might feel as though ageing is the only thing that happens to us. You know, how do we get through this time? Um, do we wish it away? Do we wish to be released? Is it being released uh, or delivered to our fate? Um, is it, in Beckett's words, salvation or damnation? The double-headed monster of time, as he says. And how much more does that somehow describe pandemic time? Um, I think reading someone like Beckett, even perhaps especially because he is, um, even though he's so seemingly quite a downbeat writer, uh, I think can help us with this sense of, of hanging in the balance of ageing without living in some way. And he reminds us that we... We already live moment to moment um, in one sense, you know, that there's no great overarching story to our lives. Um, but in another sense, we are, we're always anticipating the future or thinking back to the past. You know, we never quite live purely in the present. It's, it's what Beckett calls the mythological present. Uh, and I always think of some of my favourite lines of Beckett from something called From an Abandoned Work, it's a great Beckett title, um, a short prose piece, um, where the narrator resolves to move on in time in his narrative, in his story, skipping hundreds and even thousands of days in a way that I could not at the time. I think that's an experience we can have in writing or, or reading that we can we can sort of project ourselves forward or or backwards. Um, but even at the time, you know, in this in this pandemic time, we find time moving both slowly and improbably quickly. Um, and as it as it does often, I think for for those who are confined or or perhaps immobile. Um, we used to feel in tune with the time of the world, um, but, but somehow no longer. Uh, I might think of Beckett's Malone in, in the novel Malone Dies, another housebound narrator, bed, uh, bedbound narrator, um, who says of himself, in the old days, I was time, I devoured the world, not now anymore. A man changes as he gets on. And for us, I think the world has shrunk to the size of us in one sense in lockdown. But we also realise that time is implacable. You know, it marches on with or without us. And I think there's a vitality to that realisation, to that sort of sensation, as well as a terror. And reading Beckett's do read him. He is really funny and, and it's a sense of humour that has uh, found its moment, I think. Uh, reading literature, talking to each other, even like this, if it has to be like this, um, can help to mitigate that terror a great deal. Thank you.